Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to study rates of change, which is really slope, and then we'll do some applications with those average rates of change. We've seen slope before, and we've seen slope as a, as a linear rate of change or a constant rate of change on a line. In these samples and in these problems, our our functions are not always linear, not always a straight line. Um, but we still want to find out a rate of change along a curve. So on the right here, we've got this curve. And we're going to call it now the average rate of change. We're going to just take two points that are somewhere on that curve and connect those two points with a line and say, well, this is the average rate of change across that curve. Now that, that curve isn't going to have that same rate of change all the way through it, but between those two points at least, which make a line, that's the rate of change or the slope. So instead of calling it a constant rate of change, it's just the average rate of change uh, between those two particular points. So our rate of change, our slope, is still going to be the change in y over the change in x. You know, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So in example one here, they give us a function. And they ask us to find the average rate of change of f of x equals x cubed minus 4x. Now this is a cubic function, so it's going to have some curves in it. And they want to just look at the interval from x values from 1 to 3. So we already have our change in x. We know our change in x, or our denominator of our slope function, is going to be 2. But we need our y value, so we're going to have to plug that in and substitute that in and find that out. So let's find uh, f of 3, a little bit of a lag there. So we want to find our y value for 3, so 3 cubed minus 4 times 3, and f of 3 is equal to 27 minus 12, which is 15. So that's our y value for an x of 3. That's kind of the ordered pair, 315. And then we're going to find f of 1, which is just 1 cubed. You can probably eyeball that. Minus 4 times 1, which is negative 3. So that's the ordered pair, 1, negative 3. And now we can figure out the slope or the average rate of change. We'll abbreviate that, abbreviate that AROC. So we found f of 3. We're going to subtract f of 1. And that's all over our x values of 3 minus 1. So these are our y's. Those are our x's. Our change in y, we found those out. So that's 15 minus a minus 3 all over 3 minus 1. So our average rate of change is equal to uh, 18 over 2 or 9. Example 2 gives us a, a table of data from the University of Michigan for Sustainable Systems that shows U.S. annual municipal solid waste. Um, so our years here are going to be our x's and the amount of waste in millions of tons are going to be our y's. Our inputs and our outputs, our domain and range, our x's and y's. We want to find the average rate of change in trash between 1985 and 1990. So we're looking at this portion right here. So. In generic terms, our function t of 1990 minus t of 1985 all over our x values of 1990 minus 1985. So our t values, 208.3 minus 166.3 are our y values, I beg your pardon all over 1990 minus 1985 is 5, so our change in x is 5 years. 
and that comes out to 42 over 5, which is 8.4 million tons, tons per year. And in question B, did the rate of trash ever decline in the 58 year period when what was the average rate of change during that period? Well, if we take a look at this 58 year period, did it ever decline? Uh, if looks to be ever increasing, except between 2005 and 2010, where it dropped from 253.7 millions of tons to 251.1. So we're going to explore this portion of the data set. And we've answered that question when, between 2005 and 2010, what was the average rate of change? So we need our Y values over our X values. So our X is 2010 minus 2005, and then our corresponding Y's, 251.1 minus 253.7. So that's our change in Y over our change in X. And that comes out to 2.6 all over 5, which is a, oops, a negative 2.6, which is a negative 0 0.52 millions of tons per year. In sample 3, it reads, after surgery, you're given a pain reliever. The level of medication will decrease slowly over time. And generally medication doesn't decrease in your system at a constant rate, but it is an ever-changing rate. So we're gonna let C of T represents the medicine's concentration in the body, and we'll write an expression for the rate of change for the medicine's concentration from a period of T equals 15 to T equals 90 minutes. So. Our T here is our X's, our X values, and the, then the level of concentration is going to be our Y values. Well, we don't have a formula, we don't have any data, all we have is our X's. So really the only way we can represent this is in its generic form. So our Y's over our X's, our change in Y, over our change in X. Well, our change in Y is really whatever the concentration is at 90 minutes minus the concentration at 15. So if we put 90 and 15 into our function, that's all that is. Those, those are our Y values. Um, and then our X's are going to be 90 minus 15. And 90 minus 15 is 75. So our final answer is just C of 90 minus C of 15 all over the 75 minute time period. In example four, we're gonna explore uh, distance and time graphs. So we have a chart here on the right hand side with uh, a data and that's clearly not linear, these are uh, changing over time. It's not a curve either, but uh, we have particular data points that they are, are clearly showing on here. So our x-axis is our time in minutes, and our y is distance in miles. And what is the average rate that the car travels? So in this case, we'll use the data point at the beginning, our origin 00, zero and then we'll also use our data point at the end or the last one with an X value of 120 and a Y value of 100. The average rate of change, our change in Y, our Y's go from zero to 100. So our change in Y is 100 minus zero. I put that into my function and my change in X was zero 
to 120 or 120 minus 0. And that simplifies to 5 miles in 6 minutes. And then we want to find what that is in miles per hour. And there are 60 minutes in one hour. And we can see here that our minutes are going to cancel if we do our chemistry train tracks problem. And we get, um, simplifies that to 50 miles per hour. Question B asks us to find out how fast the car is going from time equals 30 minutes to time equals 60 minutes. So it would be helpful to have those particular ordered pairs. And at t equals 30, our ordered pair is 30 and our y value, our distance is 20. And at t equals 60, our ordered pair, our x is 60 and our y is 40. And again, they want us to convert this from minutes to hours. So we find our slope, our change in y, 40 minus 20, over our change in x of 60 minus 30. And we get 20 over 30. And that's 20 miles in 30 minutes. So we convert 60 over 1. There's 60 minutes in 1 hour and that will simplify to 40 miles per hour. When is the car traveling the fastest and how fast? Well I look for the the steepest slope and it appears that that steepest slope occurs between 70 and 90 minutes so that ordered pair is 70-50 and 90, 80. I set up my slope equation, my y's over my x's. So 80 minus 50 over 90 minus 70, 30 over 20. That's 30 miles in 20 minutes. Too many mi's here. And then we convert 60 over 1, and we get 90 miles per hour. Question D says, what is the slope of the graph between 90 and 120 minutes? What does the slope represent in relation to the context of the problem? So between 90 and 120 minutes, uh, We've got the ordered pair 90, 80, and 120, 100. Finding our slope, 100 minus 80 over 120 minus 90. That is. 20 over 30, we've already done that. That is 40 miles per hour. We did that up in sample B. So the average rate of travel on that from 90 to 120 minutes. It's the average rate of travel from 90 to 120 minutes is 40 miles per hour. What is the car's speed at 45 minutes? So if we look at our graph, we find 45 minutes here. That's that particular point. Well, it looks like he's driving at a constant speed between 40 and 60 minutes. So we might not know the distance at 45 minutes, but we do know the distance is at 40 and 60 minutes. So we could use those two ordered pairs. We can use the ordered pair 40, 30, and 60, 40. 
So using those two ordered pairs, 40-30 and 60-40, 45 is included in there, so we can use that. So calculate our average rate of change, 40 minus 30 over 60 minus 40, and we get 10 over 20. We convert that to 60 minutes in one hour, and we get 30 miles per hour. And that wraps up our samples on average rates of change, and you'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.